you very much. Thanks for coming. Um, anybody has a question? Yes, sir. No, <laughs> I don't. Uh, uh, I'd ask if, 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 if I had the kind of mind that would harbor three or four other ideas for novels while I'm in the midst of writing a novel, and the answer is no, I, I, I don't. I, I, I think I barely have a mind able to do what I do. Uh, I mean, I, I keep one of these. I keep a notebook, and I, and I keep it all the time, and I, I write in it all the time, and, but, I, you know, everybody's mind is teeming with stuff. I know that's true. And writers just have something to do with that teeming stuff. And so I write a lot of it down. And, and mostly I... Yes, I do. No, I don't do that. What, what I do is when I get ready to write something, a novel, I accumulate all of the stuff that I've written down for the last 15 years. And I and I and I study it all, and I type it into a I type it into a notebook, and I of course I leave out a lot of stuff, and I and I, I, I annotate the things that I have been noting, so that what I get is a big fat notebook, which is the sort of um, general outline for the book that I would propose to write, and and by doing that, I I, I sort of can be assured that I'm writing about the most important things that I know because if I've thought something was important, I wrote it down. And, and I don't trust my memory. You know that horrible feeling of lying in bed at night and thinking some wonderful thing and thinking to yourself, well, I'll write that down the first thing in the morning when I wake up. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't. I get up and turn on the light. <laughs> write it down, whatever it is. And then there it is. A lot of times you write something down because you think it's wonderful and then you go back and you see it and it's not. It's just not interesting. But... Um, but no, when I'm working on something, I'm just working on that. Um, there was a, there was one time in my life when I was writing the sports writer in the 80s, when I stopped writing the sports writer periodically, and then I wrote a short story, and I ended up at the end of the four years with two books. But I have not done that in, anymore. I, I I don't know exactly why. I'd love to be able to do it. It probably seems too much work. Seems about too much like hard work. That's, thank you. Yeah, you've sort of answered my question, but I, I was wondering about the gestation of this particular book and how long you've been working on and pondering it. Well, thank you. I, I, I wrote the first 20 pages of this book in 1989. Mm -hmm. and, um, and then I was sitting around in a little town <coughs> called Dutton, Montana, and waiting for some edited manuscript to come back from, my, from Knopf. And it was slow coming back, and I thought, well, you, you're a writer, you, you, you go write. So I rented a little room above a car repair. And a little, the town only had about 90 people in it. And um, so I went up there and I wrote, I write in longhand, I, I wrote the first 20 pages, they called it Canada. Then the pages came back, and I never returned to the story again. Uh, but I, what I did do was, over the course of the intervening years, I would make notes for it about what I remembered about it. I never returned it to it. I never went back and got those pages out and looked at them again. So at the end of those 20 plus years, 23 years almost, I had finished the lay of the land and it was out of my life. And I, I was wanting to make a proposal to Knopf. And the proposal I thought I would make would be whatever this novel, the story Canada had been. And it was about a boy who this is what I wrote in 1989 about a boy who was pushed across the border into Saskatchewan because his parents had been forced to abandon him. That's really all I knew. I didn't know why his parents would abandon him. I didn't know what their life could have been like. I didn't know who he would encounter in Saskatchewan. He didn't have a sister. So I had to kind of um, retrofit all of those things into the book as premises. And so. 
then once I got them all, I had, the, I had that big notebook that I described to you before I mentioned anyway. And so then I had that, then I had to begin had what this book would draw from. Thank you. That's unusual for me. I don't usually do things that way. I usually just think I'm going to write a book, and I'm, I sit down and I spend a year planning it, don't write it, just accumulate stuff. And then at the end of the year, when I start realizing that I'm avoiding writing it, <laughs> then, I, then, then I do Hi. Uh, did you see? Oh, it? That's okay. Did, did you see a, a top? Me. That's okay. Sorry. <laughs> I'm from Jersey City. Are you? Sure well, I I are, you, are, you are you? Are you packing? <laughs> yes, I am. Always. <laughs> <laughs> My uncle told me never leave home without. Uh, no. Uh, is there? A, do you see a tie be between wildlife, Joe, and Canada, yes. Dell? Yes. And then you just said you saw this. Then you talked about this proximity between the paragraph that you wrote with regard to Canada or the lead-in, uh, and it seemed to me, as I read the two, I, the, Dell seemed to me to be like almost a continuation of Joe and Joe's circumstance, except taken to a whole other level. And I was wondering if you would care to talk about that. I'd be glad to. I, I'm I'm a comer backer, um, and I did it with these with these New Jersey books. And I kept coming back to the same thing, and I, I wrote a little book in the, at the end of the '80s called Wildlife, and and then I wrote another novella called Jealous, which is set more or less in the same locale. Um, and, and and what I come to think is that I just have the kind of brain which benefits from thinking that something that I wrote is basically precursive to something better that I could write, and that I it, it, and it almost. Uh, in an almost visual way, I've uncovered some things in writing those earlier books which I couldn't have ever uncovered any other way so that I can push them to something that I couldn't have ever thought about, I couldn't have ever um, imagined or said. And, and my, my, my goal, but particularly with the stories in Rock Springs and with wildlife in Canada, is to try to find something to affirm. Um, uh, um, Seamus Heaney says that the, at the end of any poem that he wants to write, that he, he wants to accede to what he calls a scent, A S S E N T. He wants the poem to create some sense of a scent. And, and I have always tried, in, in coming to the end of long projects, to, to find something that I can affirm, something that I can assent to, that the book can be a, a vessel for. So, so that's what I felt about writing Canada. I wanted to change the stylistics of it. I wanted to make the sentences longer. I wanted the whole rig up of the point of view, so to say, the narrative structure, to be a 65-year-old man narrating his life as a 15-year-old, so that the, so that the diction had to bear the possibility of both kinds of uh, both kinds of vocabularies. And, and so, and I, I think I think that that worked out okay. I mean, I, I think it worked out that that I was able to have moments in the book when the book could rise in its vocabulary and other times when it could stay in the sort of demotic of the little boy. Yeah. But I, 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 you know, when I wrote Wildlife, I thought, and I think I was right, that I would get kicked around as, as being somebody who, you know, only had one story to tell. That I had written this book of stories set in Montana, which we call Rock Springs, and then I had gone back to that well to find something different. And I thought, well, people will say, well, he just can't do anything but this. This is all he knows how to do. And they did. <laughs> <laughs> and they did. Sure shooting. Um, but not this time. Um, some, I don't know why. The gods, you know, gods are fickle. Um, so, but I, but I was going to do what I was going to do because it's what I had. You know, as a, as a writer, you, you only have so much. You know, there are only so many subjects that are yours, so many things that you can, that you can really bring your whole self to, and, 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 and so those are things that I had, and I wasn't going to turn up my nose at it. Um, we're not limitless.